In this example, we're going to look at CSS selectors. So what you can do is open up EK126511, and this is our CSS selectors example. Now there are two uh, basic items that we will discuss in this. One is a hover or rollover button, and the other one is a rollover or a drop down menu. So if we look at these really quick, what you'll see uh, just off the bat is that these are actual wireframes. They're not actual elements themselves or design related. Uh, what we've done basically is we've created a shape and a text element, and you can note this here in the actual layers. Let me just drag this over a bit more. What we've done is we've given a style of label and a style of BG to the shape um, and label to the text. Now what we've done with the actual styles in our CSS uh, styles folder is that we've assigned a green background, a darker green, and a light green text to the button and the label in BG. Now what this will do is because our object actually has button on the folder, this will actually assign the label and the BG denoted by the actual parent folder relation in our styles folder. Now what we've done also with this because we're creating a hover state or a rollover state is that we've actually assigned this also in our actual styles folder and you'll see this here button hover now what we've done in button hover is we've actually created another uh, text element and another background element and what we did is we assigned uh, individual classes to those elements themselves and you can see them here so our background for our hover state or rollover actually has a lighter green background and the label text itself is a uh, black color now when we output this what you'll see is that when we actually roll over the, the item itself it will actually change to reflect uh, these actual settings here now if we look at our drop down menu our drop down menu consists of relatively the same logic where we have an individual item and the item has a label and a BG and you'll note this here in our actual settings for the styles um, now just to note with the uh, menu itself again the parent of this is an actual menu so we have our parent here menu and we have our individual item and we have our label and our BG. Now what we've also done in this is that we've created a hover state for our item and you can see this here actually visually also too for the hover but we've also created another individual item that we want to add a drop down to and let's just uh, basically visually show that item. This is our sub menu. Uh, let's actually go to the sub menu itself. So in item 2, we have a submenu here. Now our submenu, it relatively has item um, also repeated along with a label and a BG. So what these will do is that these will all reflect the same class structure. But our actual submenu container has a couple different classes applied. So you can see them here. One is submenu and the other is submenu 2. Now this is just to individualize the actual menu itself. Um, you should do this for each individual menu. So if you had a drop down for item one, you should have an individual class for that drop down. And also if you had one for the second item two, which should have been item three. Uh, but what we can do is we can actually just take a look at the classes themselves. So what happens in this is that the item, the submenu will not be visible. And what we're gonna have to do is actually hide this. Uh, let's just go back to it. The reason why we're hiding it, uh, it's not in the actual selectors. The reason why we're hiding our submenu is that this is the actual rule or requirement that we have. That when the user um, basically does nothing, you're not going to see that drop down. But when the user rolls over the actual item, in this case item 2, you will see that, that drop down or submenu. So what we have here is an item 2 hover. And for the item 2 hover, the submenu is visible. Whereas with item, the submenu is not visible. This is actually submenu 2 just to individualize it. Now, if we go ahead and export this, you'll see how this renders in the output. And for this, the settings that we're going to require, uh, we're going to need relative positions and layer effects because we're using that. We're also going to need to include hidden layers. Now, we're not using any CSS images, so that's not really necessary. So we can go ahead and just run this. Once the export is complete, we can go ahead and take a look at our output. Now you'll see that our button now reflects uh, basically the green background, the dark green background and the light green text. Um, this is denoted from our Photoshop file along with a light green background and a black text for the hover state. So let's just go ahead and test that. 
and you'll see it does change. Now for items, what we did was um, on the basic state or the raw state, nothing happens, but if you roll over, you'll see this deep blue. And this, again, is reflective of our actual uh, styles that we've denoted in our Photoshop file. This is the hover state. Now we also did have submenus and also a hover state uh, for an item to create a drop down. So if we go ahead and we test this in the output, you'll see that item 2 will create the drop down and they'll also be reflective uh, with their own individual hover state and this is again from the actual Photoshop PSD so we can take a look at the submenu item hover now we did individualize the submenu and again this is because if you have individual drop down menus for each item you will have to create an individual class for each this is uh, not a export kit rule this is an actual HTML practice uh, developers when they're creating drop down menus it's not magic that has to come from a database an XML or a JSON list of some type and they have to create each individual menu item now programmatically you can easily assign individual classes to these but because you're not programming and you're not coding you have to do it yourself you're going to have to actually assign each individual class to each drop down menu